Other factors, again, that influence ISQ measurements, as we mentioned, there is some conflicting data correlating insertion torque and ISQ values. The surface topography may influence the ISQ, especially during that transition. So if we have an implant that is not roughened or enhanced, then generally that is going to be lower. And um, as we have a surface topography, whether it's micro or, or nano, then that's going to be higher. Conflicting data with the bone type, type 1 through 4, you know, really uh, you would expect, again, if we look at mostly a mandible being a type 1 or 2 bone and, and areas like the posterior maxilla being type 3 or 4, oftentimes, how does the data really look at that in terms of ISQ values? And it is conflicting in the literature. Increasing sizes of peri-implant bone defects show decreased ISQ values. So, you know, again, that makes sense. If we have an area where there is a large bone defect, then you don't have as much bone to implant contact, and you would expect that the ISQ measurements would be lower. And then the cortical bone thickness does seem to correlate with positive ISQ values. So a lot of factors that influence those measurements. And then if we look at healing over time, 3 to 6 to 12 months, the ISQ values generally will increase over time, which again is what you would expect during that time of transition.